God, amen. Today we have a special uh, blessing here for you guys is that uh, Mr. Mark Gerigas, who needs no introduction, who um, is, not, is not a visitor here, but one of the members of our family here, is with us here for this weekend. So he's going to give us uh, the sermon for today. Today is a gospel that you have heard many times, the gospel of the sinner woman and the Pharisee. And when I was reading this, I felt this is such a sad situation for a really good person. Don't you agree? And here's a guy who goes to church quite often. He fasts two times a week. He gives his tithes religiously of everything that he owns. He even prays on the corners of the streets. Here is a really good man. And he missed the opportunity of a lifetime. He sat in the presence of the Holy One for a whole evening. And what did he receive from that experience? Nothing. Maybe just a little condemnation, but nothing more. He had no greater opportunity, and he let it go by. What could he have had? What could he have had if he took advantage of this opportunity? He could have had what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of anyone, the things that God is desiring to give to those who love him. He couldn't have missed out on anything greater salvation, redemption, and something that Jesus Christ calls abundant life. It was right next to him, but he missed out. Could you imagine being in a house with the Son of God and receiving nothing? Does it sound familiar? Where people come to the house of God maybe once a week? Now, I know you guys are very faithful people, so maybe two times a week, three times a week? And do you get changed every time? How many times do you enter into prayer with the Holy One and come out no different? How many times have you confessed your sins and feel nothing? How many of you have partaken of the body and blood of the One who gives life and go back out of this church the same. What a missed opportunity. What a missed opportunity to be so close to Christ and receive nothing. What's the problem? What's the problem? Is it that God is unable to change the life of the Pharisee? Is he unable? Because a few minutes after sitting with him, someone with much greater sins, a prostitute, comes in and her life is completely changed. The gospel of last week, Christ went to an individual's house, Zacchaeus, and what happened? Zacchaeus was changed. Is it because God is unable? Never. Is it because God is unwilling? Could God be unwilling to change? Someone who asks, never. When Christ told this parable, he says there were two people. They couldn't pay back their debt. And the person who forgave them, forgave them freely. It was his joy. His desire is for not a single one to be lost. His desire is to give new life to everyone. That every single one should come to the knowledge of the truth. For such a desire, he left the heaven of heavens and came to the earth and bore a humiliating death because of his desire to change each person's life that he comes in contact with. It's not because God is unable. And it's not because God is unwilling. The problem with not being changed is not with God. The problem with not being changed was in the Pharisee. The problem with not being changed is us. What was his problem and what was our problem? 
he didn't seek him. He wasn't seeking Christ as he should. When you came to church this morning, what were you looking for? Did you expect anything to happen when you partake of the body and blood of Christ and you come into the house in which the angels are bowing in front of the Holy One? Did you expect anything? You maybe might be disappointed because you expected to hear a good sermon with a few good stories and you would laugh and you would go out and you would feel like, wow, today was good. How sad. How sad. What was this Pharisee thinking? Why didn't the Pharisee get changed? Because he felt his goodness. He says, I'm not so bad. I mean, if you look at when a Pharisee prays in Luke 18, he says, I thank you, God, so much that I come to this house all the time. I thank you, God, so much. I'm not like, I'm not like an adulterer. I'm not like a prostitute. I'm not like a tax collector. I'm not one of those evil people. I mean, I fast and I pray and I thank you so much. I'm really pretty good. And I do a lot for you. How many of us feel like we do a lot for God? I come to church all the time. I read his Bible. I give money to the poor. I'm mostly honest on my taxes. You know, I, I, I'm a deacon. I teach Sunday school. I'm involved in one of the ministries at church. I am, I do so much for, I am so good. And I'm glad to be just sitting here with God. When he prays, he says, I, I, me, me, me. That is not the attitude that gets you changed. Unfortunately, because he saw his own goodness, he never saw Jesus Christ for what he is. And I feel so sad. And I say this about myself. If I truly understood the grace given to me right here in his body and blood, do I underestimate what he is giving to me? Do I think that he has given me the greatest gift that could change anyone? I don't care how good you think you are. And I don't care if you're the one that's praying at the altar or you're the one giving the sermon. I don't care who you are. Anyone could be made better. And the fathers say the highest point. You can't go beyond this. Don't you believe this could make you better? You should be every time in the presence of Christ. In the presence of Christ, we don't see him as the faithful one. We don't see him as the father wanting to heal his son. We don't see him as the good physician. We don't see him as that. The one who bears a cross stretches out his hands and says, come to me. I will change you in such a different way. I will make out of you a new creation. Did anyone think of that coming here today? Could you imagine a person going to the greatest expert in cancer in the entire world? And you go to the office and you enjoy looking at the magazines in the waiting room and you go and you say, I'm so thankful. I've got good vision. I've got most of my teeth and my feet usually get me where I need to go. I know.